Welcome to NFL Talking Points, the preview show for uh, week seven. We're going to go through every single game uh, possible, smash through it. Um, so the buyers, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Buffalo Bills, the LA Chargers, the Jacksonville Jaguars, Minnesota Vikings and the Dallas Cowboys. So we will not be talking about you guys for the rest of the show. So enjoy your week off. Thank you for listening and goodbye. Now, <laughs> we'll move on to a the... separate YouTube clip. <laughs> <laughs> we'll move on to the uh, games that we actually care about. We have Thursday night football, three and three against three and three. The Denver Broncos face the Cleveland Browns. It's injured against injured. It's terrible quarterback against Case Keenum. Um, Denver have won the last 12 out of 13 against Cleveland Browns. Not looking good. Is that the first energy stadium? Despite that, and despite the fact that there's no Baker Mayfield, and the only run, uh, only wide receiver the Browns have got left is Odell Beckham Jr., who's been horrendous this whole season and last season, non-existent. I've uh, again gone with the hashtag and I've backed the Browns. Um, we mentioned it earlier in the group chat: Case Keenum and uh, Stefanski. They were both at Minnesota when Minnesota's made it to the NFC Championship. Case Keenan was the ninth highest rated quarterback under uh, Kevin Stefanski um, when he was quarterback coach in, uh, at Minnesota. So I've got full confidence in him. And I think he's got a better throw than Baker Mayfield has, um, which I think they lacked, obviously, against Cardinals with no running game. So I think it's actually quite a good injury to have. And I think the Browns win this one. And I've gone 27 21 to the Cleveland Browns. I have also backed the Cleveland Browns to win this one 23-20. Mm-hmm. Again, this was, this was all done before the news of that Baker Mayfield was definitely going to be out in case Keane's going to replace him. But I think this is going to be a scrappy game. I think it'll be defences on top, so there'll be quite a lot of turnover. Potentially multiple pick sixes, who knows? But I just think at the moment, the Broncos are just in disarray. They just keep simply falling far too behind. And I think normal services resumed. I just don't think you can trust Teddy Bridgewell or he's just making some really bizarre throws. And Browns at home, I think, to keep their slim playoff hopes alive will win it late on with a field goal, 23-20. Um, yeah, I'm also bracking, bracking, backing the Browns. Um, I've gone 27-16. Uh, moving on to the Sunday games, none, unfortunately. Um, or fortunately for Americans who like sleep are in uh, NFL London uh, we have the Carolina Panthers travelling to the New York Giants uh, two very poor teams going against each other um, I'm a Panthers fan so no Panthers fan comes to me but Giants it's fine the, the interesting one for this one the Giants have scored 31 plus points in each of the last two meetings against us uh, but they have lost both um, due to two last minute field goals one of the longest I think was it 62 yarders and Graham Gano last time uh, Graham uh, Gano now plays for the Giants, so I can imagine it's gonna it's gonna hurt. But I have backed the Carolina Panthers because surely we're better than the New York Giants. One and five. <laughs> Stephon, Stephon Gilmore will be there. Gilmore, AJ Boye, as you two cornerbacks, like it's, it's far. CJ Henderson maybe might be back, but Stephon Gilmore is nailed on. He's, he was at practice again today, um, so he should be playing. And we have the best cornerbacks in the NFL. So I've gone for a Really convincing 24-18 win for the Carolina <laughs> Panthers. <laughs> I've also yeah, actually... Um, oh, go on. Yeah, it's funny you say that, Jamie, because uh, I've got a point less for each team. I've gone 23-17 to the Panthers. Ooh. Yeah, I've also backed the Carolina Panthers, but to win more convincingly, 26-10. I know the Panthers have got their injury issues, but the Giants are just so bad at the moment. No Kenny Galladay, no Saquon Barkley. I think that hurt, the injuries hurt the Giants even more because they've not got many good players at all. Like, whereas at least the Panthers have got capable players. you still got DJ Moore capable on his day. Bobby Anderson, when he remembers he's a wide receiver, is still capable on his day. And yeah, and I think that the, the Giants, this is Sam Darnold's level. And I think that as they that Panthers defense, despite their injury woes, will do well. They've just literally got to stand in the middle of the field and somehow Dan Jones will find them. So, yeah, they'll win this one 26 10. So, it will look like things are back to like how, how they were. But I think it's remembering it is the Giants. But four and three and Panthers won't care. Next, we, uh, we it's actually a 
phenomenal game if you think about it. Chiefs, Titans, live, probably going to be on Sky Sports, NFL Red Zone, um, probably touchdowns galore. I'm really sorry, Titans fans, but it worked out last time really well for you when I backed the other team you were playing against. I've actually gone for the Kansas City Chiefs to win this game 31-27. Uh, I just... I, the thing is, you've always got to back Patrick Mahomes. I, I've had to in this game. I don't think the Titans and uh, can, can win again against a, a bigger team uh, in the Kansas City Chiefs. So I've gone for a Chiefs win, um, 31-27. Again, apologies to all the Titans fans who are going to watch this. <laughs> Sorry, Tennessee. I'm also back no. the Chiefs. Oh, no, not again. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, this could be deja vu, couldn't it? Um, I will admit... The Chiefs have got their defensive frailties. Um, we we've seen that already far too many times this season. I don't I, I don't know. I just think the Chiefs. I just think the Chiefs on the road are just so much better at the moment. And yeah, I'm going 35-26 to the Chiefs. Um, I do believe the Titans against wide receivers are terrible. Um, come at me, Titans fans, if if you, if, uh, if I'm wrong. Um, but according to the fantasy app, I believe you are down at like number thirty against wide receivers, um, and I just Tyreek Hill um, is one of the best wide receivers in the league. So I think he'll get a, I think he'll get a lot of points. And yeah, thirty five twenty six to the Chiefs. Titans fans will love me. I have backed them to beat the Kansas City Chiefs thirty seven thirty one in overtime. Reason that I've gone for that, I think that both defences are absolutely woeful. And especially, I see the Kansas City Chiefs defence against that run game. I think that it's going to be a big day for Derek Henry, especially in Nashville. The Kansas City Chiefs are always going to be in the game with their offence as well. But there's certain players that haven't been firing as much. I mean, we've not seen as much as of Travis Kelsey. So I thought we were. Tyreek here one minute will be explosive and get three touchdowns. Next minute, you just won't see him. Be like, where's Tyreek? And it's going to be, it is going to be a co one because you've got both teams that have got potentially explosive offenses but dreadful defenses. And the Chiefs, for me, that every big matchup they have, they seem to lose nowadays. Like when you actually face a capable offense, and the Titans are certainly on their day. I know they're better on the road, but the last big road game they had was Baltimore Ravens, and they bottled that when they lost that one, 36-35. So it's going to be very close again. But the Titans fans will be buzzing, and hopefully will subscribe, because I've backed you boys to win 37-31 overtime. And it will be that man, Derek Henry. Uh, speaking of Derek Henry, he's got 783 rushing yards this season, which is more than 26 NFL teams. Um, so I'll give, him, I'll give him that one. And uh, yeah. So subscribe, Tennessee fans, because... One of one of us is actually backing you this time, um, but two, you got to prove us both wrong still. Although you did last game, and yeah, but you lost to the Jets. Right? You can't blame us. Can't. <laughs> no, we want subscriptions. So subscribe. We love the Titans. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we've got the Green Bay Packers welcoming Washington Football Teams at Lambeau Field. Uh, will Aaron Rodgers own? Washington, uh, I've gone. I've gone for a yes, twenty-eight seventeen. I probably could have gone a lot more for for Green Bay, but they've not been that good um, offensively yet. Um, Washington have allowed thirty-one points per game uh, this season, which is the most in the NFL per game. So, yeah, so I've gone just under it, twenty-eight for the Green Bay Packers, seventeen for Washington football team. Right. Yeah, I have to agree. I have to agree with Jamie. Um, I've also batted Washington to get 17. Um, I've gone slightly higher for the Packers. I've gone 30. So 30 17 to the Packers. This has become very scripted. I've also backed Washington football team to get 17. But again, I've gone slightly higher and I've backed the Green Bay Packers to get 33. Aaron Rodgers will own Washington football team. They're just, as you say, Jamie sort of highlighted it in the review when they lost to the Chiefs. What are Washington football team? I would, if they if they do have any fans, I'd love to know what their what their plan is, what they're actually trying to do because they can't defend this season. Offense is nowhere near explosive enough, and yeah, this is just going to be so routine for Green Bay at Lambeau Field. And they're, they're not as explosive as they have been in the past, but they just do enough. They have enough good plays again to see off teams like Washington. So yeah, thirty three seventeen. Yeah, 
Next, Atlanta Falcons uh, back from their bye week, taking the Miami Dolphins. I'm surprised Miami haven't got a bye here, to be honest. Um, going mm. to London and coming back, it's very unusual for that to happen. They normally, when a- any team that goes to, to London, normally have a bye straight after it, but they don't. Um, they, yeah, welcome Atlanta Falcons to the Hard Rock Stadium. And um, because of the travelling and everything like that and the whole situation, maybe with Tua, maybe not with Tua, um, I back the Falcons uh, to win this game, 27-17. I think we've got the basement battle, really, of the AFC East and NFC South, minus the, the Jets and the, and, and the Panthers um, for this one. But, yeah, I've backed the, um, yeah, I've backed the Falcons to win this one, 27-17. Uh, did anyone back the Dolphins? Uh, I, I promise. Miami Dolphins. I promise I've not copied. I don't copy Jamie like with the teams and how many points they get. But I've also backed the Dolphins to get seventeen, um, and I've gone the Falcons to get twenty six. Oh, one point off! Wow. Okay, that, that could be a two pointer. Yeah. Wow. One of you to get that. But yeah, Adam, I'm, you, you, I have disagreed. Dolphins? I've got. Yeah, I did go Dolphins. The only reason, well, there is another reason <laughs> because yeah, I didn't know about the Deshaun Watson news, which Jamie will explain in a moment. And to be honest, I'd even make the connection about them flying back from London. One thing I will say, yes, there's a time zone difference, but probably Miami travelling to London probably doesn't take as long as Miami travelling to, say, Los Angeles. That's how huge America is, of course. But like you said, I think this is two very poor teams. And yes, the Atlanta Falcons got the win from London, but they've got the injury concerns. They're very heavily reliant on Kyle Pitts and Conzero Patterson. Not quite sure about as they can with Ridley returning. That's very touch and go. And they almost let the Jets back in it. And I think Jets with a bit more composure could have easily have died that. And then who knows in overtime. So I think it'll be a very poor standard game. And I think it's one of those that Miami have got to break this losing duck at some point. And the Falcons are known for turning the ball over as well. So I've gone for the Dolphins to edge this one, 19-16. But I don't expect to be much on red zone. So it'll be mainly field goals, etc. Yeah. And uh, yeah, on that news, obviously the trade deadline in the NFL is uh, November the 2nd. Um, and the Texans are closing on a deal to send a Sean Watson to the Miami Dolphins. They want, I think, three first-round picks and two players um, do the Texans. So I am stunned and see what what, what the Dolphins offer them. Um, yeah, they need a quarterback. Obviously, they don't trust Tua. Uh, no longer Tua time. Uh, Deshaun Watson could be doing time um, with all the uh, six relegations. But um, <laughs> so it, yeah, breaking news. Yeah, that's that's it. Texans uh, apparently very close to a deal. In the Miami one Dolphins. of the rumors, just to add to that, Jane, one of the rumors I'm reading as well is it's actually going to be a free way trade deal that sees Tua going to Washington Football Team which will be interesting because Washington football team, they're clearly not sure about Tyler Heineke, but then is Tua better than Heineke? No. So I find that all the whole thing very bizarre, to be honest. And then what we've got to look at is from a Miami point of view, it, uh, it like sort of players that go in the other way, it's which two players would want to go to the, the Houston Texans. I can't imagine any remotely high, high profile. If they do, it's purely got to be for money. Do the players get a, a say in the trade? It'll be interesting because I can't imagine the Texans, they're going to want these, the decent players that one of the few decent players that Miami do have. They're not just going to accept backup safeties or linebackers. They're going to want someone who's going to significantly improve offensively and defensively as well as the first three draft picks. So, but they obviously must have agreement in principle for NFL sources to be reporting this one. Next, we have got the Cincinnati <laughs> Bengals taking on the Baltimore Ravens. Actually, a fascinating game. Um, Ravens, Lamar Jackson has a 5 0 record against the Bengals, and I expect him to make it 6 0 against the Bengals. Uh, I've gone for a 34 24 Ravens win at the MTT Bank Stadium. A couple of very good games, actually, on this NFL red zone uh, Chiefs, Titans, Bengals, Ravens. Um, but yeah, I've, I've, I've given Bengals 24 points, but 34 to the, to the Ravens. I generally can't believe this. You are, Jay. You you you've, you've gone 34 24. No, I've gone 34 to the Ravens. <laughs> How many? 23. I swear, I, swear, I swear every game we've just like backed the same team to get the same amount of <laughs> points. Um, no, Bengals 20. Well, I got four points off. I'll take that. That's not too bad. 
feel like I'm your parrot. I've gone for the Baltimore Ravens to beat the Cincinnati Bengals 34-24. <laughs> so we've all gone 34 points to the Ravens. We're all that confident yeah. for some reason. So they'll get 34 I mean, points. I mean, if they, if, they can score, if they can score 34 points against a, a decent Chargers, that weren't decent, but a decent Chargers, yeah. then surely they have to get at least the same against a Bengals team. Yeah, I think that's yeah, a that's very true. And I, I just, I just see it. Yeah, I've got to be honest. Be- Ravens getting thirty-four against the Chargers didn't factor in my prediction. I just thought it's going to be a fairly high-scoring game because both offenses are in really good form at the moment. I just think that the Ravens have that extra quality that the Bengals haven't really faced this season, and it will be a case of the Ravens taking that lead, the Bengals fighting back. But it's just simply too much for them to do. So yeah, that's why I've gone thirty-four twenty-four. So that's happened a couple of times this season that me and Jerry have got exactly the same score. Mm, great minds think like, or we're a pair of idiots. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, definitely the latter. Yeah. Probably the latter, yeah. Um, <laughs> move, moving on to the next one, we've got the New England Patriots taking on the New York Jets in the massive basement battle of the AFC <laughs> East. Uh, New England have won 11 straight games against their mighty basement rivals, um, the Jets. And I expect it, uh, I expect... 12 straight wins against the Jets from New England Patriots. I backed them 24 17. Um, Jets obviously come off their bye week. You never really know about a bye week. Um, they should have done a lot better against the Falcons. Um, but Foxborough, they've surely got to snap this losing four game streak at home against the Jets 24 17 Patriots. Brad? I've, I've also backed the Jets to get 17. This is this is this is bizarre. I promise I've not sat next to Jamie and looked at his scores. Yeah, I'll, okay. just, I'll, I'll just, I'll just keep the, I'll just keep the same team to get that many points. But I'll yeah. just change the other team. Wow. Um, Patriots 28-17 to the Patriots. Um, surely, surely this. I mean, at this point, we might as well. If if the Patriots win this, it's going to be Oli Gunnar Belichick, isn't it? Um, it will just keep his job for another week. Um, and then, uh, and then some, and then some pressure will probably apply in week eight. But there we go, twenty eight seventeen. Yeah, the New England Patriots are very lucky that the Jets are in the same division. Them. So, like a lot of teams, when you're facing teams so poor twice, it pretty much guarantees two wins. So in the past, I'd be confident of the Patriots game ridiculous amount of points against the New York Jets, but the Patriots' offense is just not what it was, as we well and truly know. Defensively as well, with one minute, Patriots defense looked top ten. Next minute, it looks like bottom three, to be honest. But as I say, I think the Jets with Zach Wilson, they're just making far too many mistakes. And if you're making the, the mistakes against the Falcons, who are pretty much Patriots level, I expect the same thing. And you think if Mac Jones can't get his first home win against the Jets, it's, it, we're going to run out of home games. So, but I just, I just cannot see surely that the Jets win. I think if the Jets beat what winning Fox, bro. Belichick has got to resign. I mean, I want him to go anyway. I just think it, I think it's like father time for him. I just think he's like his ideas are dating now. Too negative. Probably the most conservative head coach in the National Football League. Surely he won't even need to do anything. Just let see Belichick take over for this one. Put your feet up for the week because you surely got to beat the Jets at least 23-13. And even that's really too close for comfort. But I just don't trust the Patriots team against anyone. We saw what happened in Houston. And I think the Jets are at Houston's level. So it wouldn't surprise me if the Jets took an early lead. It's going to be a weird one and uncomfortable viewing. Just want it over and done with. We'll take three and four to make us look better than we actually are. On to the late window games. We have the Philadelphia Eagles against the Las Vegas Raiders, a game that really could go either way. Um, Philadelphia have won three out of the last four against Las Vegas. Um but I've actually backed Las Vegas uh, to um, to actually win this game. I've gone 23-20, late field goal. Just don't I, – I, I, the Raiders just don't have – it. Uh, sorry, the Eagles just don't have enough for, uh, for me to win this game. And the only difference really is one's got uh, probably one of the best tight ends in the division and the Eagles have nothing. So I've gone 23-20 to Las Vegas Raiders. Yeah, I'm also backing the Raiders. Um, again, Jamie, I promise I haven't sat next to you, but I've also backed the Eagles to get 20. Um, and the Las Vegas Raiders uh, to get 27. 
I've gone very similar to you two. I've gone for the Raiders to beat the Eagles 27-24. It's one of them I was very close to giving the Eagles this one, but mm. I think that the Raiders for me, uh, I think it's because I, I got I got it right against the Broncos. They seem to have a bit of no lease of life. I think the whole Gruden shenanigans is pretty much over and done with. Not for him personally, he's uh, like doomed. But from the, the, the team's point of view, I like the passing game. I like the way that Derek Carr's really starting to uh, like, uh, bed in at Henry Ruggs. You've got Hunter Renfro, like we mentioned, Josh Jacobs, Kenyon Drake had his first big game of the season. The Eagles, with Jay, when Jalen Hurts gets going like, from his like, rushing game, it's a threat. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers found that out. But uh, the Raiders tend to take leads early on. And the Eagles tend to fall behind. And I can see that pattern happening with the Eagles just about giving themselves too much to do. They may even level it. And the Raiders have got quite a reliable kicker in Carlson. Mm. So it'll be a close one. They'll think this is two fairly evenly matched teams. But Raiders just got a bit more offensively, 27-24. Yeah, I think that was the hardest game for me to predict all week. Yeah, me too. From the hardest game to predict <laughs> to the easiest game to predict, uh, the uh, Detroit Lions go to LA to take on the Rams. Jared Goff and Matthew Stafford facing their former teams. Obviously, Goff was the one that was pushed out and shoved to the Detroit Lions. It's his revenge game um, at the SoFi Stadium, 9.05 p.m. UK times. Um, I've given the Lions nine points, which is nine more than I actually was going to. Um, but surely they get a few couple of field goals. <laughs> and the Rams, I've given 34 points, which I think is actually very nice. I mean, I could have gone 40 easily, 40 plus easily. But yeah, 34-9. Don't need to explain why. It's the Lions. I think it'll be a convincing win for the Rams. Uh, I've actually been quite nice to the Lions. I've given them 17. Wow. Um, wow. I think the Rams will get 42. I've gone for pretty much the same type of scoreline to slightly less. I've gone for the Rams to absolutely annihilate the Lions 35-10. It's, it's difficult to even really preview this because this, this is not a comparison. There's a reason why Goff is at the Lions and Stafford at the Rams. Two teams that have got completely different ambitions as well. You've got one head coach who's, I say, who, who's young and talented and I say already been to a Super Bowl already and is close to going to another one. The other ones that started off talking about biting kneecaps to crying, but obviously he proves that he, he's a real man. Yeah, it, this is just going to be a no contest. And I think that the only reason that the Lions are going to get their 10 is because Stafford will be putting his feet up. He'll probably be at LAX airport fly, flying for uh, like a holiday somewhere whilst the, the fourth quarter's uh, commencing because it's just going to be so routine, several turnovers. I think it's basically going to be a repeat of what the Rams did to the Giants. And I think from your Rams fans' point of view, you're absolutely delighted that back to back weeks you've got Giants and Lions. That's dream fixtures right there. So, yeah, 35-10. Yeah, they have to... Uh, the LA, one LA team has to have an easy run of fixtures to make themselves look good, don't they? <laughs> you're not salty about that, are you, Brad? No, not at all, mate. <laughs> to the 9.25 window, a couple of games uh, remaining on this NFL Sunday. We've got the, well, again, we said about easy games to predict. Texans at Cardinals. Arizona averaging 32.3 points per game, which is the most since 1948 in the NFL. Um, and I've given them 42 points in this game, and I've given the Texans 13. Wow. Probably nice. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. Very generous. Very generous. But yeah, yeah. Cardinals 7 0. Easy run. As you said, easy run of fixtures. It's all about timing the NFL. And the Cardinals have been given easy run yet again. Yeah, I'm back in the Cardinals to go 7 0. Um, I've given the Texans nine points, either three field goals or a touchdown and a very unlikely safety on Kyler Murray. Um, <laughs> And the Cardinals, I mean, apart from that one week against the 49ers, they've got 30-plus points consistently. Um, I'm giving them 38. So 38-9 to the Cardinals. Yeah, it's difficult to disagree with anything you just said. I don't give the, the Texans a prayer. I've, I don't know why I've given 14, to be honest. It seems 14 too many because the only time they're going to score like 14 or more is when they face Steve Belichick's defence in the New England Patriots. 
but it, it won't matter if they get 14 like late on because the Cardinals are going to get 41. It's just going to be a same annihilation. I think it, it's going to be actually a very busy late window for Resident on for them couple of games because it's two brilliant teams, two, two of the three best NFC teams against two dreadful teams in the Lions and Texans. So, yeah, 41-14, not going to be close. Kyler Murray field day. And any kind of player you've got is going to be good fancy points for sure. 925 Bears at Bucks, Raymond James Stadium. Rookie quarterbacks at 5 and 20 against Tom Brady uh, all time. Bucks did struggle last season and lost to the Chicago Bears um, in Chicago on Thursday night football. Um, it was basically last season when they lost there, it was the I think it was 2017, but it was the end of the Bucks, end of Tom Brady dynasty. He's never going to win anything again. And obviously, seven weeks later, he won the Super Bowl. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to win this. Not as convincing because I think the Bears are very stout still on defence. Um, 24-17 for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Jamie, it's another game where we predicted the same team to get the same points. Um, back in the Bears to also get 17. Nice. Um, and the Buccaneers to get 33. I'm really surprised that... Jamie, in particular, has made this game close. I just In Tampa Bay, I just cannot see this game being close. I've gone for the Buccaneers routine in the sunshine to beat the Bears. Well, actually, give the Bears a bit of a slap in. Tom Brady, like Aaron Rodgers, owning them 38-20. I, I can mirror it very similarly to the uh, Miami game recently at the Raymond James Stadium, where, the, where it started off, the Dolphins, like, like the Bears, will be... They were competitive early on, shocked the crowd with the early scores. And if Justin Fields does that, he'll probably do a little pose for the cameras, annoy Tom Brady. Brady be like, right, I've got to put Justin Fields in the, uh, back in his lane like Aaron Rodgers did. And then uh, Brady will let loose to your usual Antonio Brown. The likes of uh, Mike Evans have had a quiet couple of weeks. I expect him to come good. And even in tight end, the strength and depth is ridiculous. So even if Rob Gronkowski is still out with these injury. I think he's now listed as questionable so that's actually encouraging for the Bucks. You've still got OJ Howard and the uh, other tight end. Oh, I can't remember his name. He's Bray? obviously not in Yeah, that's it. Uh, Bray. Cameron Bray. But, yeah. um, even so, miles better than what the Bears have got. So yeah, the, the, the Bucks are just uh, too good at the moment. And you're surprised when they don't get more than four touchdowns. So yeah, 38-20. Sunday night football, we have a well, who cares? Uh, it's the Colts against the 49ers, two teams that will probably just miss out on playoffs. That's really all I've got. I've actually got an interesting stat about Carson Wentz. Uh, most consecutive attempts without an interception. Carson Wentz is currently number one with 144 consecutive attempts without being intercepted, uh, number one in the NFL as it stands. Um, but uh, ignore what I just said, because I've given 49ers a win. Uh, 22. <laughs> 23-20. Uh, however, the Colts, all the stats point towards the Colts winning this game. Uh, they've won the last four straight uh, games against the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, Colts are 2-4, and four, 49ers 2-3. and three. I've gone for 49ers, 23-20. There's no reason behind that. I've just gone for 49ers because they're, they're at home. If the Colts are at home, I actually think the Colts are the better team. And I think they've got the better quarterback and the better running back. Um, so, yeah, I've gone 49ers. Yeah, I mean, I've also backed the 49ers. Um, so I just think I just think Trey Lance will just do bits, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm going 49ers to win this one quite convincingly, 27-14. Wow. I have gone for the Indianapolis Colts to win this one, 28-21. Nothing spectacular. The Colts, I think, like Jamie Wright said, is the better team. The 49ers, I just feel like, again... They're going to be one of them teams. I like, don't want to have obviously got the rich reign of history, undisputable, but I just feel like that the Super Bowl against the Chiefs is really going to hurt this franchise for a long time. They just can't keep players fit. George Kitt always getting injured more often than Christian McCaffrey on injury reserve again. He's a huge loss for them. That's a big weapon missing for Trey Lance. So it looks like it's going to be Trey Lance in the, the firing line against the impressive Colt defence. The only really threat that the 49ers have is wide receiver Debo Samuel. I think he's actually a really good wide receiver who does get talked about enough. 
But the, I, I, I think the 49ers will get hit with their own weapon, and that is the running game. And you've got jo Jonathan Taylor at the moment, who seems to be running every rush defense ragged. And even if he doesn't punch it in, Carson Wentz seems to be finding Mo Ali Cox for the short touchdowns. And yeah, and I think NFL is it's about time and momentum. 49ers are looking a bit disarray. Football the bye week don't make much difference to them. And again, there is still time for Colts to make a charge for the playoffs because there's no threat from the rest of their division. It's Titans and them if they want it, if they want that wildcard spot because you're just not going to get anything from Texans and Jaguars, are you? So, yeah, 28-21 Colts. Yeah, I probably should have bad. Yeah, I should have bad the Colts. It's fine. It's fine. Are you nervous about the predictions? It, it, it's the only one where I, yeah, I, I regret, I regret why it's, uh, my prediction, but it's locked in now. Um, it is. So it's what it is. Um, so I'm going to be a 49ers fan for uh, the next few days. For Monday Night Football, we have the New Orleans Saints back from by against the Seattle Seahawks. Seahawks are 11 and 12 Monday Night Football under Pete Carroll, which is the best win and loss record in the NFL since 2010. So because of that, um, I've backed the Saints to win this game. I think <laughs> uh, Geno Smith just isn't good enough. They really need their defense to step up, and they they did against the Steelers. But it's Big Ben, you know, it's not Big Dog Jameis Winston. You know, the guy can launch it eighty yards, fumble it next play, intercept it next play, and throw another eighty yard touchdown after that. So I think because he, he's so unpredictable. I mean, is it Jamal Adams who's the who's the cornerback for the for the Seahawks? Probably the, the, the worst. Safety, or the, the safety, Sorry, safety. Throws it. I mean, it hit him in the face. There's a video, look it up, it is hilarious. He said, so you know when they do like the intro, it's just like, oh, Jamal Adams, safety. And then he says where he's from. He literally said, number one safety in the NFL. In what universe? He is beyond useless. And if you get him one-on-one, -on -one, you're guaranteed a touchdown. So I've backed the Seahawks to win this game. I've put it tighter than what it is because it's, it's James Winston, isn't it? 24-21. Um, probably a couple of fumble recoveries for a touchdown after Winston fumbles it yet again. Um, but yeah, 24 21 to the Saints. And I'll be surprised if anyone back the Seahawks for this game. Um, it's a full house of agreeing with you and uh, nearly a full house of uh, agreeing with the same points. Same well. points. <laughs> because I've also backed the Saints to get 24 um, and the Seahawks 17. Okay. I've also, see, I, I felt like the last few games I was missing out of you, so, so I've co coerced and I've also gave the Seahawks 17. <laughs> but I've uh, backed the, the Saints to get 27. Again, the Saints are nothing special. And I look at all their wins and you look at their performance against the Panthers, you're thinking, really, this is what the threat to Tampa Bay is in their mini division? But they find a way to win games, but then they do lose games. So should they should um shouldn't be losing like Carolina. So poor teams three really, like Carolina Panthers and New York Giants, the so real basement teams. But we move, they obviously beat the the, the right harder teams like New England Patriots, but it, it's fine. Focusing just on uh, this game. Seattle, as I say, I think that Russell Wilson is just such a huge miss. And Geno Smith, like Jamie's right, he said, not good enough. And I think that what Russell Wilson be missing from this team, it they lose the firepower of what DK Metcalf and Lockett can do because Russell Wilson doesn't just throw it. He scrambles around the pocket like a Kyler Murray does and or like a Deshaun Watson. And then that's how they make these special throws. Geno Smith just simply isn't capable as well. The Seattle defence hasn't been quite at it. I can see Alvin Kamara, who we've not thrown about for quite a while, calls problems. And yeah, I think it's... um going to be such a long season without Russell Wilson. So, yeah, comfortable Monday night football win for the Saints, 27-17. That is every game. Uh, yet again, if you're a Steelers, Bills, Chargers, Jags, uh, Vikings and Cowboys fan, you've made it to the end of the show. Congratulations to you. Uh, I don't know why it's been over. Congratulations to me. I made it to the end. Yeah, you made it to the end. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's better than most people. Um, no one's actually listening anymore. So, um, yeah, we're going to sign off and we'll be back next week to review every single game that we have got wrong.